difficult about honestly accepting what Jesus is saying. Right, and that's good. And what does pride say? That's good. What now? Yeah, but what does what does your pride say? I can do it my way. I don't have to do it. I got this. Yeah, I got this. I got this, or 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 it's just diff. Yeah, it's difficult. Like for me to say, you mean everything that I have not really laid before God and opened up to Him has no value. That's a stark reality, man. Everything that I, that, have, that I have not really opened up to him and let him in on is worthless. Man, that's, that's, that's a pill to swallow, isn't it? And then how do you start? You just got to pray about everything, I guess, because everything's on the docket now. Everything's on the docket to pray for, man. I need to pray about, okay, God, when's a good time to get up? When's a good time to go to sleep? Is it good to watch this? Is it good to eat that? I need to pray about everything since apart from him, I can't do anything anyway. But then it's an invitation. He's saying, I want to give you life so you can start living. And I have to get beyond myself. And it's just, it's, it's, uh, to honestly go there is that I have to admit what, I, what I've been doing, who I am, what my life's about. Wow. As back in church history, one of the aspects of the history of Christians is the problem with most Christians. They start out well. They don't go far enough. That's the problem. They just don't go far enough. We get to a spot and we want to build a camp around this. And that's it. God say, we need to go deeper with me. There's a deeper spot. There's a sweeter spot. There's a better spot. There's a higher place. And Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should what? Always, always pray and not give up. And not give up thing is a difficulty thing. I pray and like little children, if we don't get it now, Raise our little spiritual temper tantrums. <laughs> In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. It's a curious parable. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time, he refused. But finally, he said to himself, either I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. How does that help us pray? This is a judge. Now, what kind of what kind of judge is God, or what kind of authority is God? He's a good God. Versus this is an evil judge, right? If an evil judge, even by persistence, will do it, how much more a loving father, if you come to him and ask, is he going to give you stuff, right? And the Lord said, listen to what, I, what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? God is going to bring out justice for his chosen ones. If you continue, at what? Who cry out to him. Just when times get desperate. When you cry out to him, when, they, when, you, when prayer becomes your lifeline and you live this life of connectedness, God takes notice. God will take notice. It will be huge. I tell you, 
he will see that they get justice and quickly. Quickly! How many know that God's quickly is a little different than your quickly? Yeah. Have you figured that one out? Read Revelation. Jesus, one of his last things that he says in the book of Revelation, I am coming quickly. Quickly! It's been over 2,000 years. But it's a drop in the bucket of eternity, so it's quickly, right? He's not willing and wanting any to perish. That's why God is patient. But he wants everyone to come to repentance. However, when the Son of Man comes, say, however. However. So, okay, there's a little caveat here. Oop, asterisk. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth. <coughs> if you learn to pray, you'll learn to dream again. If you learn to pray, you'll learn to dream again. And I say again because every child naturally dreams and hopes. To learn how to pray is to enter the world of a child where all things are possible. Little children can't imagine that the parents would eventually say yes. They know if they keep pestering their parents. They'll eventually give in. Childlike faith drives this persistence. But as we get older, we get less naive and more cynical. I think that's what happens with our prayer. We get a bit cynical. Now, I've been praying for that. Nothing's happened. Yanish Sanchez says the defining characteristic of our day is cynicism. But he says the problem with cynicism is a double edged sword. It protects us from crushing disappointment, but it paralyzes us from doing anything of value. Disappointment and broken promises are the norm instead of hoping and dreaming. Our childlike faith dies a thousand little deaths. Cynicism begins, oddly enough, with too much of the wrong kind of faith. I like this. With naive optimism or foolish confidence. At first glance, genuine faith and naive optimism appear identical since both foster confidence and hope. But the similarity is only surface deep. Genuine faith comes from knowing our Heavenly Father that he loves us, he enjoys us, and cares for us. Naive optimism is groundless. It's childlike trust without the loving father. If you know... How do we break the cynicism that works in our hearts and in our minds? The lingering doubts. Does it make a difference anyway? How do we get out of that? Look, get our little 